everyone. Welcome to my session. I'm Alex Bennett from the British Library, and today we'll be harnessing the power of configuration and settings in Strapi plugins. Let's dive in. So plugins provide the flexibility and power to create custom solutions tailored to your specific needs. But why should we focus on configuration and settings? We have to remember that not all of our Strapi users are developers. So making plugins configurable from the admin panel improves the usability for non-technical users. This enhances the overall user experience and increases the potential adoption of your plugins. Let's explore the reasons why adding settings to the admin panel of your Strapi application is beneficial for you, your users, and your project. First up, it allows for easy configuration of your plugin. Users, even those without coding knowledge, can customize your plugin to their needs. This is especially valuable if you plan to publish your plugin and want to empower users to tweak its functionality or define important information such as API keys for third-party services. By adding settings to the UI, admins can change these settings in real time without having to edit code, rebuild, or restart the application. Different environments like local staging or production environments may need different settings. And having these settings available in the admin panel makes adjustments per environment much easier. Given the example that we're looking at today as an API key, we need to ensure it's kept secure. Ideally, we don't want these kinds of values to be hard coded into our plugin code. We can securely save as well as encrypt or decrypt these settings when they're saved in the Strapi database. Another significant advantage of leveraging the settings interface in the Strapi admin panel is the opportunity to provide documentation and guidance to our users. The interface allows you to offer additional information and instructions on how to use and configure your plugin effectively. You can incorporate tooltips, placeholder text, and other forms of inline documentation to guide users and help them get the most out of your plugins. By providing clear guidance, you can enhance the user experience and ensure that users can easily navigate and utilize the functionalities your plugin offers. By incorporating settings into the admin panel, you can ensure a consistent look and feel across the entire application. This creates a seamless user interface and user experience and contributes to a cohesive design language throughout the Strapi dashboard. Additionally, having all settings in a centralized and expected location enhances the usability, making it easier for users to find and manage the various settings related to your plugin. Now let's explore the overall impacts of incorporating these settings into the admin panel. Let's assume that we've got a plugin and it's making a call to a third party service. We need an API token somewhere in our code. We're going to be looking at three methods to add an API key to our plugin. First, let's make some assumptions. We're going to assume that you're familiar with Strapi's architecture and its core functions. I expect you may have some experience in creating, installing, and configuring your own plugins. And we're also going to assume that you're comfortable navigating and using the Strapi admin panel, which is an essential part of today's discussion. Looking at our agenda, we'll start by exploring how to effectively use plugin configuration in Strapi. Next, we'll dive into the Strapi store. We'll delve into using content types with Strapi plugins, utilizing these versatile tools to store and structure plugin data efficiently. And finally, we're gonna look at how all this can be used in the Strapi admin panel. Harnessing plugin configuration is a crucial step in customizing your application to meet specific needs. In this context, it's crucial to define the default values and passing your data. This enables you to establish the initial values or fallback options for your plugin settings, ensuring a consistent behavior and functionality. Let's take a look at two code snippets that demonstrate this concept. First, in the plugin.js file located in the config directory of our project, we define the default configuration for our awesome plugin by setting the token value. Next, in index.js, located in the config directory of our plugin, we define the default function that returns an object with the token property set to an empty string. We also have a validator function that ensures the token is properly set to the correct type. By defining the default configuration and passing in your data, you can use your plugin's settings to match your specific requirements. Let's explore some more code snippets to see how this is achieved. Before we proceed to the culminating example, however, let's take a quick look at some helper functions that assist in plugin configuration. These helper functions streamline the configuration process and make it more efficient. They will be particularly useful as we progress further. The first helper function is getPluginID. It resides in the helpers directory of our awesome plugin. 
This plugin retrieves the plugin ID from the package.json file, allowing us to easily reference it in other parts of our code. The second helper function is getPluginConfig. This function takes the strappy object as an argument and returns the configuration object specific to our plugin. Lastly, we have a build config function, which can be found in the services directory of our plugin. This function utilizes the get plugin config helper function to extract the token property from the plugin configuration. Next, let's explore how we use the tokens stored in our plugin's code. So, we retrieve the token from the configuration using the build config helper and utilize it to make a request to an external API. We can now use data in our in our code however we want. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of each method as we go. To recap, the plugin ecosystem allows developers to inject variables directly when they include the plugin in the project. The pros of this method are that it's easy to add and manage configurations within the plugin object. This makes the method quick to implement. This approach does not require any database operation, making it a lightweight solution. This is a great option when the settings are static or not supposed to change regularly, or if they're not dynamic in any way. The cons for this method is that it's harder to update settings on the fly without modifying code and potentially redeploying the application. There's no user interface in the admin panel to configure the plugin, which makes it harder for non-technical users. And it's less straightforward to handle different configurations for different environments. Next up, let's dive into the Strappy Store. This powerful feature allows us to easily manage our plugin configuration and settings. Next up, let's dive into the Strappy Store. This powerful feature allows us to easily manage our plugin's configurations and settings. To get started, we create a plugin store instance specifically for our awesome plugin. This gives us direct access to the Strappy Store and allows us to interact with our plugin's configuration. Using a data store like the Strappy Store is the recommended approach for updating configurations in production. It provides scalability and is multi-server friendly, making it a great choice for managing settings. With the Strappy Store, we can effortlessly retrieve and update settings, enabling dynamic and efficient management of our plugin's configurations. In this example, we'll utilize the Strappy Store to manage our plugin's configuration. We create a plugin store instance and retrieve the token key value using the plugin store.get method. This value is used to set the token state. When the user saves the setting, we update the token key with the plugin store.set method. This takes the value from the token state. The Strappy Store provides a powerful and secure solution for managing plugin settings, offering flexibility, built in support, and consistent handling. The pros of this method are that it's flexible and consistent API for accessing database stored settings. It's a built-in strappy feature designed for easy compatibility and use, and it's secure storage of settings with uniform handling. Now, if we're assuming that we're building an admin UI to go along with it, the cons to this method are similar to our next method. This approach involves leveraging the content type within Strappy, which provides powerful features such as admin panel controls and permission controls. While it requires more effort to set up, the benefit it offers far outweigh the additional work required. So let's explore how this method can provide enhanced control and flexibility over your plugin configuration. Before we start using content types to store plugin configurations, we need to set up the necessary structure. This involves building the content type that will hold our configuration data. We'll kick things off by adding a content type. You can use the content type builder or the CLI generator to do the heavy lifting for you. Just remember to relocate the generated files to the correct directories in your plugin. Our content type includes a required string attribute, token. This will be used to store our API key. It's important to know here that I've tweaked the plugin options to hide the content type from the content manager and the content type builder. This ensures our settings are managed in a controlled manner. In our plugin directory, we set up two routes, get and post to handle the API key. They're both accessible via settings. In index.js located in our plugin server directory, we're pulling in the previously defined setting routes, but here we're configuring these routes specifically for admin types. This ensures that only admins can access and manipulate these settings through the routes. In our settings.js under the servers controllers directory, we define three critical functions. 
get token to retrieve our save token, showing only the initial six characters. Use token fetches the token and makes an authorized get request to a third party API. Set token sets the new token value. All functions connect directly with our plugin settings, utilizing Strappy's entity service for interactions. Now that we have our content type in place, it's time to set up the admin UI for our plugin settings. This will allow users to easily manage and configure settings through a user-friendly interface. Let's see how we can create the necessary components and routes to integrate our plugin settings into the Strappy admin UI. By leveraging the Strappy design system, we effortlessly achieve a unified and professional look across our settings page. With this consistent and thoughtfully designed interface, our users will have an intuitive and seamless experience as they interact with our plugin settings. Also in our plugin, if we edit our server's bootstrap file, we can introduce permissions to the content type and register it with Strappy's admin services. Not only does this protect our plugin settings, but it also integrates the plugins directly into Strappy's UI, making it visible under the plugin permissions. It's a backstage pass that keeps your plugin settings secure while also being easily manageable. Strappy's plugin architecture seamlessly integrates content types, providing fast and efficient structuring and storage. The pros for this method are that the admin panel changes immediately, reflected without code modifications. User-friendly UI in the admin panel simplifies plugin configuration for most non-technical users. And your data structures can be modified and extended for more complex settings. Much like the Strappy store method, the cons of this approach are that storing plugin settings as content types or in the store does add complexity. Content type updates and associated code changes do increase maintenance efforts. And additional tasks such as backups and data migration may be needed due to storing database settings. Thank you for joining me in this session on harnessing the power of configuration and settings in Strappy plugins.